So we're gonna try to do a quick carving demo for woodcut, and some of the same rules will apply for linocut as well. Your tools are essentially either V-shaped or U-shaped gouges. So the tools look kind of similar to what we had for engraving. They're mushroom shaped, so they'll go in your palm and you can push it away from you. But notice that they're straight, they're not bent along the shaft. I don't know if the camera can see this if I hold it up close. Ooh, creepy. There we go. This one is a U shape, so it'll take out a large area. This one has a very tiny, I can't get it in the camera, there we go, has a very tiny V shape, so this will make very, very fine lines. You also have a couple tools in your kits that look like regular knives. This one is a chisel, and you can see, I think, against there that it's got an angled edge. I use this a lot for what I call pre-cutting, for cutting a line around a shape before I go further. This one has a little bit of a curve in it, almost looks like a spoon. This is really good for getting big shapes out to get underneath it and kind of pop them out. What I normally recommend is wherever possible to try to cut with the grain. So in this example, the grain is running this way. So as much as possible, I want to cut in that direction. Now, obviously, based on my design, there are going to be some areas where I'm going to have to cut against the grain or in different directions. That's why I have this bench hook. The bench hook is pretty simple. It's got a 90 degree angle downward lip that holds on to the table edge and a 90 degree angle upper lip that's gonna allow me to push against it so I don't have to have my hand holding the block. So those of you who had some issues with the engraving, like aiming the tool at your hand, that will not happen here. So use the bench hook. The nice ones to me are the ones that have this notch in them so I can turn and still have a nice firm pressure. So I never have to have my hand out here. I never have to have my hand in front of the blade. When you go in to cut, I would not set up to do it this way. Again, my grain is going this direction. So if I'm trying to cut this way, I'm going from dark wood to light to dark to light. And generally, the darker wood is going to be a harder, denser, harder to cut area. So I'm going to turn it back to this orientation. Let's start with a relatively easy one. This rectangular shape right here, I'm taking my angled chisel. And I am cutting in. And I'm holding it a little bit on an angle. I'm not straight down. I'm on a little bit of an angle. I'm going in from the black side into the white just to give myself a little bit of a starting line. And the reason for this is so that I don't accidentally cut outside of that shape. So I'm not really digging it in really deep there. A portion of a millimeter's depth is all I'm doing. And I'm right now not even pulling it like a knife. I'm just pushing it in like a chisel on an angle from the black into the white all the way around. Here, around this area, I can use it more like a knife to start a line around my curved area. I'm going to put him to the side and take my narrow V-shape tool. I'm going to cut away from myself and as much with the grain as possible. I'm kind of putting the tip of the tool right in that little tiny cut that I just made. And I'm just pushing it away from myself. You can see it's going to produce a fair amount of waste. I'm going to do this one because it's also with the grain. So those are pretty easy. If the tools are sharp, those kind of cuts are no problem. So now I have a little trench right here on these sides, but I need to get a trench going here, here, and around the curve. And in all of those cases, I have to go against the grain. So I'm going to be really careful with that. Getting into that little groove that I made. And you can see that it's not making as even a mark because it's having to go from thick, dense, to very soft areas in the wood. That's why that pre-cut really helps me. 
I don't know if you can really see that on the screen, but right along this edge, if I hadn't put that line in there first with the chisel, this would be all jagged. It would look kind of like, I don't know, like animal fur. So now I've got that trench going all the way around except around my curve here. Portions of this will go easily because it is with the grain. Now I'm going against the grain. You don't have to cut the whole shape in one go. You can cut a small portion and then move your tool. And there again, because I've got that little trench going, it's helping prevent me from going too far into the next shape. So now I've got a little bit of like a moat around all of that, which is meant to be white. So now I can go in and use a bigger tool. I can use my wide mouth U-shaped uh, tool and go in there and take out larger sections. You don't have to cut very deep. That one's kind of dull. You don't have to go super deep. About a millimeter is all you need. And you notice I'm not cutting all the way across. I'm cutting toward the middle. I'm going to cut about half of the shape in this direction, and then I'm going to turn the tools around, turn the plate around, and start on the other side and come back to the middle. That, again, is preventing me from accidentally cutting through the shape into an area that I don't intend a cut to be. So I really have not cut very deeply. I don't know if you can really see on the screen there. I definitely have a depressed area here. And you can see it's a lighter color now than the areas that haven't been cut. But it is not super deep area. A lot of times people will get frustrated. They'll go in with the tools and start digging like they're shoveling, digging a hole. Right? It does not have to be super deep. A millimeter is fine. right? So what you want to think about, though, is when you're working with your design idea, right here, this is all fairly easy. I've got a white shape with a black background on one side. In order to get these two shapes to separate, if they're both white, I need to keep that black line in between the two there. So that's another reason why I like to start these off by cutting a line first. Again, I'm using my angled chisel. giving myself a place to start on this oval shape. Switch over to my U, or V rather. Get that trench going. I can do those, especially with curves and fairly short cuts, instead of trying to cut all the way around the whole thing in one go. Then I could use my bigger U shape. Again, I'm removing. So that's pretty easy, right? What about where you have a shape like here? In the border, I meant for the border to be black, but for there to be a couple places where black shapes would touch the border. Obviously, I'm going to need some kind of barrier here. So I'm going to go around the outside of that circle with my angled chisel, give myself a line to start with. Follow around that with my thin U-shape or rather thin V-shape tool. And that will give me a nice, simple white line right there. To show you even more clearly what I've just done, I can take a Sharpie. and color that in more solidly. So 
I can see what I've done. So there's a little thin white line there. Now, obviously, you're going to be primarily doing solid black shapes, solid white shapes, but you're also going to want areas that you can create textures or to create the feeling of something being gray through hatching or cross hatching. And that's what these two are meant to do. So with these, I don't have to follow these lines that I drew here. I've already just gone in there just to give myself a visual clue to remember that that's meant to be gray. So I can do hatching and cross hatching in that area. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in more solidly so that you can see the carving a little more clearly. So a lot of woodcut printmakers will actually go ahead and color the block with ink so they can see the carving that they're doing. I think that's a really good idea. So usually I color in things that are meant to be solid black. I leave alone the things that are meant to be white. I might take a pencil or something to sort of shade in the areas where I want to make things gray. Give myself a little barrier between that circle and the next shape. A little barrier here as well. Because I'm going against the grain, I'm going to start this one with my chisel. Follow it with the thin V shape. There we go. So now this whole thing that I just colored in, we really want that to read more like a gray. So I'm going to just simply follow the grain as much as I can and cut some very thin lines into it. So it's almost like cross hatching in reverse. I'm cutting the white out. So remember, everywhere that you cut is an area that the ink is not going to be able to stick. I can also play games here with how much hatching I put into this area so I can create a feeling of there being a little bit more of a shadow there. I could go in and use a slightly wider tool even and take some bigger sections out to create the illusion of a highlight. So you can actually create highlight and shadow pretty believably just by carefully planning where you're going to put your cuts. Personally, I find that the patching is a little easier for people to grasp on this first one rather than trying to do true cross hatching. But if I wanted to, in theory, I could cut on a diagonal across there as well. Does that sort of make sense to you guys now? It's a pretty direct process. There are a couple tricks, of course. One is to cut that edge first and widen it before you start trying to remove things. Want me to show you a, a screw up, something to avoid? I mean, that could help. Right? Let's pretend. That this area again is meant to be nice and solid black and here comes Mr. B the dum-dum deciding he's gonna cut this whole thing all the way across right so if I take my biggest tool don't cut the edge first and try to cut all the way across there the tools gonna slip on me and you can kind of see that happening already even if I try to stop when I get near that edge, it, the likelihood that I'm gonna go past it is pretty strong right so you want to make sure to prevent things like that. If I had put in a little barrier there, again, I'm going from the black side on an angle into the white side with this chisel knife. I go in there and widen that up now. Now there's a little trench that's theoretically going to stop me from going too far. So if I'm cutting toward that, when I get to it, it's going to... I don't know if you could hear that. It literally stops me from going into this border. So that's the wisdom of pre-cutting that edge. Try wherever you can to cut with the grain as much as possible. I usually find for myself, psychologically, I like to do the biggest white shapes first, usually, because that's the most work. And then as you go, then you can get down to the nitty gritty detail things that you can go a little more slowly. I know printmakers who go the other way. I know people who like to do the details first and save the big spaces for the end. Either way makes your work a 
little bit easier, I think, if you plan it ahead, <laughs> so you have a strategy of what you're going to do. But really, the um, process after this is really simple. We're going to take the brayers, roll out some ink, we'll roll across here, and the areas that are still raised up are going to catch the ink. We'll put paper on top of that and burnish the back of the paper to transfer the designs. So it is very similar to making a potato print, if you ever did that as a kid, or if you have ever had those old-fashioned things called checks, you go to a bank, you have to turn it in, and they put the stamp on the back of it. That's relief printing. It really is. So it's fairly straightforward. It does take a little practice. So I gave you some scraps to play with. That's probably a smart thing to try out. But I would absolutely recommend draw out your design exactly the size of your block. Figure out exactly what's going to be black, what's going to be gray, what's going to be white. Ink it before you start cutting. It will take a little time to set up, but it will save you agony of cutting the wrong thing. The most common mistakes, I just showed you one, not cutting the edge and then accidentally cutting into a shape you didn't intend. The other mistake is getting turned around because we just did the dry point in the intaglio techniques where you cut, that's where the ink goes. Now this is the total reverse. Here where you cut it, no ink is going to go there. So cut what's white. Does that make sense? Okay, great. I'm going to turn the computer off and turn the lights on.